book out today, how to revise for calculating the amount of reactants and products in a chemical reaction. What I want you to imagine is you're a chemist. You're a chemist working in an electrolysis plant somewhere where you're, you've got a client who comes in and says, right, we need 10 tonnes of aluminium. So we've got a question up here, this is what we're trying to work out. 10 tonnes of aluminium, and your boss says to you, right, you need to make 10 tonnes of aluminium. How much aluminium oxide are you going to need in order to make your 10 tonnes? So through the process of electrolysis, we're going to need aluminium oxide coming into the reaction. We are going to produce aluminium and we're going to produce oxygen from this. We've got to work on a few basics first before we can calculate exactly how much aluminium oxide is needed to make 10 tonnes of aluminium. Because your boss is not going to be happy if you put too much in and you waste it. Equally, your boss is not going to be too happy if you don't put enough aluminium oxide in and you don't end up with the full 10 tonnes. So, here's how we do it. Step number one. You need a balanced symbol equation, which we have here, already balanced up for you. Higher T, you're probably going to need to be able to do that yourself. Um, we then need step two. We need to find out the mass of the formula for each of the chemicals involved, the reactants and the products. So on the left hand side we're going to look at our aluminium oxide first. We're going to ignore the two at the front here and just look at the relative formula mass. So we have just going this side, two lots of aluminium, that's two lots of 27, and then we've got three atoms of oxygen in here and that's three lots of 16. Add all that together and you end up with 102. Now 102 is the relative formula mass. To work out one mole, and one mole of a substance basically contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That's a lot. That's a lot of atoms or a lot of molecules in one mole of this stuff. So one mole of any substance has that number of particles in. So how do we know how much to use? Well, the relative formula mass of 102, all you do is pop a little g after it, and that stands for grams. If you have aluminium oxide and you weigh out 102 grams, 102 grams will be one mole. So let's do the same with the next part of the equation. So we've got our aluminium over here. We're ignoring the four at the beginning to start with, because we're not going to just look at the chemical itself, aluminium 27. If we want one mole of this, remember, with step two calculating one mole to begin with, we want one mole, which is 27 grams. Here, let's ignore the three just there. Oxygen's being produced, that's two atoms of oxygen. That's two lots of 16. That comes out at 32. So one mole of oxygen, 32 grams. So what do we do next? We need to actually factor in the total number of moles of each of the chemicals being used and being produced. Here, aluminium oxide, we need two moles. It's a bit like saying two lots of all of this. So we're going to have to double this number here, 102. That's why I've written 204 down here. Calculate the mass of all of the moles needed. This is our step three. 204 grams are required. In order to produce four moles of aluminium. Now, one mole of aluminium is 27 grams. Four lots of that, four moles, will be 108 grams. Just ignore everything below here just now. Oxygen, we know one mole is 32 grams. Three moles, as it says here, three lots of oxygen is going to be 96 grams. Therefore, we've now got the basics in place. You can work out anything from there, really. What we could say is, therefore, if 204 grams of aluminium is needed to make 108 grams of aluminium and 96 grams of oxygen, then it would make sense that if we had 204 tonnes of aluminium oxide, we would make 108 tonnes of aluminium. And we would be making, at the same time, 96 instead of grams, instead of tonnes of oxygen. So you can scale this right up, you can scale any equation 
right down, any reaction right down to the tiniest amount that you might need. And that's really where our final step comes in. The final step is to scale these numbers, these values, either up or down to however big or small you need them. Now, we're being asked, go back to the question here, we're being asked for 10 tonnes of aluminium. So we've got to try and get what we will use as 108 tonnes, we've got to get that down to 10 tonnes. So the first thing I'm going to do is take our 108 tonnes and find out how much one tonne is. To do that, I'm going to divide 108 by 108. So that's easy enough. And I've done that down here. 108 divided by 108, that gives you one tonne. Now, if you were being asked then for 10 tonnes, which we are, we just multiply that number by 10, and that gives us 10 tonnes. We've just got to do the same thing for each other part of the reaction. So we're going to go straight in for the kill. That is the aluminium oxide. We need 204 tonnes to make 108 tonnes of aluminium. So we're going to do the same thing down here. 108 divided by 108 times 10. We're just going to take our 204 tonnes and we're going to divide that by 108. So it's divided by the same factor as this one is. And we're going to multiply it by 10. That will give us our answer of 18.8 tonnes. That makes 10 tonnes of aluminium. And it also makes 96 divided by 108 again, multiplied by 10 to find how much it would be for 10 tonnes of that. 8.8 tonnes. Just a quick double check. All of your reactants through conservation of mass should add up to all of your products added together, which is 18.8, both sides. Hopefully that helps. If you want to try one for yourself, see if you can work out, using this method, how much aluminium you can make from just one tonne of aluminium oxide. How much aluminium can you make from just one tonne? Have a go. If you come out with 0.53, you've done a good job.